Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? Around a year ago, I set out on a mission to cleanse Louisville of its zombie population in a series titled Liberating Louisville. Unfortunately, I failed to set up the settings correctly, causing the series to come to an abrupt end after 10 episodes. Taking the information I've learned from that series, along with some new mods that you all kindly offered up, we're diving back into the same concept, but in a new territory. Raven Creek is a modded map expansion that adds a massive fenced-in city to the southwest of Knox County. For the players who joined after Build 41, this was our Louisville before LV was added to the game. The goal here is the same, wipe out every zombie in the city in one single life. There's chaos, dumb moments, silly mistakes, fire, and of course, a ton of car crashes. With that being said, let's jump into the build. Before we get into all the mayhem, I just want to give a quick thanks to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. You ever get the feeling that your current web browser is taking up all of your PC's resources, causing it to move at a zombie-like pace? Some browsers use multiple gigabytes of RAM just to run in your background, if only there was a way to change that. Opera's GX control feature lets you set caps for the amount of CPU or RAM you want your browser to use. That way, you won't end up like those filthy Chrome users who let their web browser suck up all their precious resources. <laughs> Want it to work like that browser all your parents still use? Well, you can do that. That wasn't a selling point. What if I told you you can use GX mods to overhaul your entire browser? Personally, I use the Zombie Apocalypse Overhaul mod, which comes with a custom wallpaper, background music, audio cues when you open and close tabs, and keyboard sounds to make it sound like you're writing in a journal. If this one doesn't interest you, here's two more user-created zombie mods that you can check out. We have Damned, a Call of Duty Zombies themed mod, and The Last of Us, which is obviously themed after both games and the TV show. Both of these were created by Opera GX users and featured the same customization as the Zombie Apocalypse theme. Listen, I get it. Switching browsers is a major pain in the ass. That's why Opera GX is a quick import tool, which allows you to transfer all of your settings, bookmarks, browsing history, and cached cookies. It's so fast and easy that I did it in the middle of fighting a group of zombies without even getting touched. No, seriously though, it is incredibly easy. You just go to the gear icon, scroll down to synchronization, select import bookmarks and settings, and then just select the browser that you're currently using. If you want to become a zombie slaying Giga Chad like me, ditch those losers over there and click the link in the description or in the pinned comment to download Opera GX today. Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get into it. For traits, I went with my standard setup of Dexterous, Outdoorsman, Gymnast, Fast Learner, Organized, and then tacked on Stout and Athletic for my positives. For negatives, I threw on Slow Reader, Cowardly, Weak Stomach, Smoker, Prone to Illness, Conspicuous, Agoraphobic, Underweight, Slow Healer, and High Thirst. I also went with the Repairman Occupation for the two levels in Maintenance and the Boosted XP for Maintenance and Short Blunt. I spawned in in a school gymnasium. There's lockers on the east and west ends that I looted for any clothing, bags, or recipe magazines before making my way outside and killing my first zombies. Apparently, this is a part of the Raven Creek College, which I didn't even know existed, so that was really cool to see. It's a beautiful building, and I tried to check it out, but was quickly overrun and forced to retreat back into the road. I don't have a weapon yet, so combat isn't a great option. I was able to shove a few zombies over and then stomp on them, but it's really just not worth engaging with at the moment. There was this really cool moment early on while I was looting a small eatery where I was able to kite and fend off several zombies while cooking some food in a tight enclosure, all without a weapon.
With some general supplies, I set off for the eastern end of Raven Creek. There's a warehouse out there with an office building that I can hold up in. It's fenced in and hard to reach, so once the area is cleared out, it should be one of the safest locations in the city. My plan here is to let the zombies break down one of the gates so that I can loot the metal pipes to use as weapons. They're not the best weapons by any means, but something is better than nothing. Especially early on, it's not worth getting picky over. By that evening, I was able to get into the office building and to begin looting it. On the second floor, I found a big hiking bag and a crowbar. In the attic, I found a pipe wrench and another crowbar, giving me some pretty decent options for melee weapons. Heading downstairs and into the kitchen, a group of zombies broke through one of the windows, so I pressed myself against it and funneled them through one at a time, squashing them as they dolphin dived through. The next morning kicked off with some more combat while I focused on continuing to clear out the surrounding area. This included zombies both inside the factory and outside the fencing. There's a neighborhood nearby that'll be fantastic for both general supplies and weapons. We'll be able to go door to door and load up on canned goods, short blunt weapons, and even have a chance at finding a generator. That being said, I spent most of my time in these first few days trying to face the zombies head on. I brought a crowbar and a ball peen hammer along with a metal pipe and generally favored my short blunt weapons over options like the crowbar. This was mainly due to the fact that I went in with the repairman trait which gives a bonus to short blunt XP also allowing me to snowball that skill.
I was eventually able to deal with zombies lingering on the dead end section of the neighborhood, and with that, I was able to catch life and living. At this point, I was ready to start my looting run until I tripped an alarm, effectively reverting all of my progress. That evening, I was able to catch the 6 o'clock showing for Life and Living before spending the rest of my day pushing into the neighborhood.
the end of the day, I was able to make some pretty good progress pushing into the neighborhood. I even found a survivor home at the end of the road to the south, and when heading inside a nearby building, found both a can opener and a sewing kit, giving me a needle to party with Demi Lovato. Since it was so late, I decided to crash here for the night and head back in the morning. My goal was to make a quick pit stop back at base to drop off my loot before diving right back into a second looting run. The big issue is that I'm severely encumbered, so whenever I encounter any zombies, I've got to spam drop gear to take them on. By the time I'd killed the stragglers, it was almost 6am, so I dipped into a nearby house to watch Life and Living before heading back to base. Right now my biggest concern is just getting my weight up. If you don't know, running the underweight trait gives you a 20% damage debuff until you get your weight to above 75. This isn't a huge deal though. If we get lucky and find some butter or margarine, we can bump that up in a few days. That being said, we are currently at every male high schooler's favorite number and dropping. Because of that, I just started shoving my face with any high calorie foods I could get my hands on. Foods like dried beans have thousands of calories, but will make you depressed and make you incredibly thirsty. If I were smarter, I'd wait a few days and focus on fixing up the warehouse to make it safer while waiting for my weight to bump up. But as Alex Jones would say, I'm kind of retarded. So that afternoon, I found myself back in the neighborhood, working my way through various groups of zombies.
I actually almost died here while kiting zombies through a house. I tried to hop through a window as a zombie walked into it from the outside. Luckily, I was able to shove run past it before I could be grabbed and was able to escape back home for the night. The next day, I once again found myself in the neighborhood doing the same thing as before. By that evening, I came across a survivor home from my first day here. Since I have a hammer on me, I was able to take out the barricades on one of the windows before hopping in. Inside is a variety of guns and other weapons. This may look like a huge jackpot, and don't get me wrong, it's a great start. The big issue comes with the amount of ammo for the guns. You can give someone all the guns in the game, but if you only give them 10 shells for their shotgun, well, you're not gonna get very far. Because of this, I chose to loot the best guns with plans to revisit them at a future point. For now, my focus is solely on the melee weapons. Speaking of melee weapons, I found a ton in the cabinets, including a machete, a tin can club, and a baseball bat. After making my way back to the office building, I spent the rest of the day decorating my room with all the looted weapons I took from the survivor home. Apparently, I violated an unwritten HOA agreement because I woke up the next morning and found a few unwelcome neighbors hanging out. Later on, while exploring another block of the neighborhood that I've been ransacking, I came across yet another survivor house, which is the first time I've ever found two in the same neighborhood. After killing the zombies around it, I marked it on the map for later and set back off to find the first home. Since I'd only looted the kitchen, I wanted to explore the upstairs portion of the house along with the garage to see what I'd missed. In one of the bedrooms, I found another machete, a scrap blade, and a regular crowbar. There was a salvaged crowbar there as well, but it was in bad condition, so it wasn't worth taking. In the garage, I found a blowtorch, another scrap blade, a baseball bat, and a wood axe. I also took some of the modified 2x4s for some reason, and looking back, I think I spent way too much time perusing Opera GX mods and not enough time focusing on grabbing actual usable items. With the first home officially wrapped up, I swung by the survivor home I found that morning to see what items were worth looting here as well. Thank you. 
While clearing the area, I also stumbled upon a zombie with a large backpack, allowing me to swap that out for my hiking bag. Inside this survivor home, I managed to find a generator magazine, some mayonnaise, and then an absolute jackpot of melee weapons. Things like baseball bats, nightsticks, a huge scrap pickaxe, and another wood axe. I also found bourbon and sleeping pills so I could impersonate Charlie Sheen that evening. There were a few zombies hanging out upstairs and even one that was glitched into some furniture, which I thought was pretty funny. That was really all that happened on the 13th though. That being said, I've spent a good three days or so in the same area. I've got food, weapons, and general supplies to last me a few weeks at this point, so I figured it was time to begin branching out. There's a self-storage up the road a bit. We should be able to find a generator up there. The only downside to that right now is that I don't have a sledgehammer with me to break down the garage doors, so we'll have to hope we just get lucky. Worst case scenario, I'm bringing one of the wood axes with so we can just smash the doors until they cave in. The walk there wasn't too bad either. I was able to level up sprinting and, after clearing a few stragglers, made it to the self-storage entrance at around 9.30 that morning. After thinking I was in the clear, I began making my way towards the first set of storage units until I was ambushed by a dozen or so zombies busting down the doors. At this point, I was already tired, so after fighting for an hour or so, I figured that it just wasn't worth it and set off back to base for the night. I woke up late the next morning to our first heli event. Because of this, I moved onto the street to try to take advantage of the situation, since it'll pull zombies that are roaming in the nearby forest, and it was a good idea to get them taken care of early on. During this first event, I managed to level up my long blunt skill, though I did lose the baseball bat in the process.
After making it back to the self storage that afternoon, I picked up where I left off slaughtering all the nearby zombies. With no sledgehammer to my name, I whipped out the axe and started breaking down the garage doors one at a time. Surprisingly, it only takes a few hits on each door to remove them, which was a bit of a shocker to me. For some reason, I was fully anticipating having to hit each door like 10 times. That being said, I spent the next several hours doing this, only to find empty rooms or useless gear. By nightfall, I still hadn't found a generator, though I did find an opening into one of the warehouses that was absolutely loaded with gear. I woke up the next morning to find a few zombies hanging around the base, so I got to work clearing them out, leveling up Short Blunt in the process. At this point, I'm not entirely sure where else I could find a generator if not at the military outpost. I do want to find a car before we head over there though, if nothing more than for the fact that I'm planning on looting everything in the facility. After cleaning up some of the zombies lurking around, I set out to find myself a working car. This is my biggest pet peeve with early game Zomboid, and it's 100% a me problem, but I basically spent the entire day searching for a car that either had a key or a working engine. By early afternoon, I managed to find a few cars in the neighborhood, but ran into the same issues. The good ones had no keys, so I'd need to hotwire them, and the bad ones had keys but had 20% engines. Eventually, I settled on some piece of shit car with a 40% engine and took that to a nearby fossil oil to fuel up for my trip. With the car secured, I looted the fossil oil before heading back to base for the night, taking the rest of my available time to read some skill books. I set out for the military outpost early the next morning. It's also worth noting that I made the decision not to bring any guns with me since I have limited storage space in my car, so my goal is to get in and clear the entire area with hammers. If there's too many zombies, then I'll grab whichever weapon has the highest available ammo and transform it into Danny DeVito. The roads were surprisingly devoid of zombies, at least for the most part. There were a few clusters once I hit the main road that increased as I made my way to the outpost. It was pretty clear that I was in way over my head before I even parked the car. This is by far the biggest horde that I've encountered this playthrough, and hammers just aren't going to get the job done. We'll need some firepower for this, but with that being said, I still gave it my best shot, spending the majority of the day working through dozens of zombies, breaking two of my weapons in the process, though I did level up my nimble skill, making melee slightly more bearable.
By that evening, I was tired, wet, and exhausted. At this point, I just want to head back to base, recoup and rearm, and try again tomorrow. So I did just that. The next morning, I grabbed two machetes, all 100 rounds of my 38 Special, and my s and and once again, set out for the military outpost. The biggest issue with firearms right now is that I just don't have any ammo. This was the largest amount that I had that I can be paired with a gun, so until we break in, this is what we're confined to. Since I have aiming zero, using anything other than a shotgun for the first few levels is asking for trouble, so a pistol of all things is practically worthless. But hey, at least it's not raining anymore. This played out practically the same as yesterday, but with machetes this time. Since I have no levels in long blade, it takes me four swings to kill a zombie. The pistol takes two to three shots per zombie to kill them, and it takes close to 20 seconds to reload all six rounds, so it's effectively useless. Though I still use it to fire volleys into the crowd like any other public school kid would do. By the end of the day, I leveled up Longblade twice, aiming once, and reloading once. Oh, and I'm still sitting outside of the entrance, though there are about 50 more corpses strewn about the ground. Moving on to day 3, I was starting to get a little annoyed at how difficult this was proving to be. If I'm being honest, I think it's just been a while since I've tried something like this, and I'm still getting used to that grind again, so ignore my mindless bitching and let's just get into some more combat. For weapons, I brought back both machetes, although one was practically broken. I'm running out of hammers, so I did grab a 2x4 with a blade on the end of it, along with a meat cleaver, and a pickaxe that I found next to a blue truck at the base. From there, I continued to where I left off, kiting zombies around the fencing, and using the chairs to rest when I became exerted.
Eventually, I was able to create a small opening, and for the first time in three days, I was finally able to set foot inside the outpost. It's much easier to kite in here since I can split the zombies up without putting myself in too much danger. Feeling a little risky, I decided to check out one of the tents since there were a few weapon lockers in them, though this one only had military clothing. That was, however, until I checked the last locker, finding a ton of magazines and a few boxes of ammo. I was able to take the only box of 12 gauge shells before narrowly escaping death while climbing through the window. While kiting zombies, I did manage to find a generator up against the western fencing, so if nothing else, at least we have that. By late afternoon, most of the zombies had split into smaller pockets, making them much easier to deal with and allowed me to get some looting in. I hit the other tent nearby and was able to walk away with two more boxes of shotgun shells and a pretty solid moss bird. The damage isn't the best, but it'll be nice to grind with and get some levels in my aiming skill before switching to the better weapons available. A little later on, I found a Remington which does have a little more damage than the Mossbergs, so I did swap to that. I'm leaving a lot of the other ammo aside from the 45 ACP and 12 gauge shells for now since there isn't a need to grab them at the moment. I still have to clear out the surrounding area and I'm really only interested in weapons that I can use immediately. That being said, we'll definitely get an armory going at some point when we have the freedom to choose, but for now, I'll stick with the shotguns. On my fourth day at the military outpost, I finally struck gold when I found one of the many armories in a tent to the northeast. There's a few dozen boxes of ammo and a ton of high condition guns. I was able to swap out my M19 for a perfect condition one and walk away with six more boxes of shotgun shells and five more boxes of ACP, along with a total of seven usable M19 mags. There's a few other tents in this section to loot, but I think I'll do the rest later. For now, I want to focus on getting rid of the remaining zombies.
looting some crates, I managed to find a welder's mask and a sledgehammer, meaning we can just sledge holes into the fencing to navigate the outpost. There's a small pathway blocked by crates that I disassembled, allowing the zombies to bleed through. That afternoon, I found myself boxed in at the entrance to the next level of the base. After taking care of that group, I was able to make my way over to the newly uncovered section of the outpost, taking some time to loot another armory tent for more ammo, before finally heading back to base for the night. We've still got a few more days to go before this outpost is secured, but progress should be much faster now that we have guns. That being said, I think this is a good place to stop for now. So far, we've racked up 812 kills, with 321 of them coming from short blunt weapons, and 182 coming from firearms. A crazy number when you consider the fact that we really just started using them today, with the exception to a few zombies with the S and W. Here's what my skills look like for those of you interested in that. Obviously Short Blunt is leading the charge, but our aiming and reloading is coming along nicely as well. Next episode, we'll look to fully secure the military outpost, and then work on getting our base set up before picking out our next target. A very special thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters, who make it possible for me to make videos like this. I appreciate you all, and as always, thanks for stopping by.